Welcome back to another video. Today I want to try an experiment with some uh, retro writing using nothing more than just the sun. So I've got this uh, Apple Extended Keyboard 2 and it is quite yellowed. Um, so what I want to do is just take it outside, put it in the sun, and cover half of it up so we can see how much just direct sun actually removes some of this yellowing. So let me uh, compare this to one that's not so yellow so you can get an idea of how yellow this is. Kind of matches my uh, shirt, it's so yellow. All right, so here is a keyboard, uh, Apple Extended Keyboard 2. And it's, uh, you know, it's fine. It's a little yellow, that delete key is looking pretty yellow, but here's the one we're looking at today. And you can clearly see the difference between the two here. So what I'm gonna do is take it outside, cover half of it up, and just let it sit in the sun. So that's right, we'll be taking a look at doing some retro writing today without the use of any peroxide or any UV uh, artificial lighting, without having like a retro bright tub, just putting it out in the sun and seeing what happens. So this idea came to me because uh, one of the Facebook groups I'm on, and actually several of them, um, I've seen people talking about doing retro writing just by putting equipment in the sun without any sort of other treatment. Um, and I, I think that, you know, that sounds crazy, right? Because these machines are probably yellowed because of UV light. How is giving them more UV light going to restore the original color? Uh, science that I just don't understand, but, you know, everyone that uh, has been posting about these has been posting before and afters, and it really seems like that is the case. So I'm going to use that old uh, Apple Extended Keyboard 2 because I've got a bunch of them. They're commodity items. They're terrible to type on. And, you know, who really cares if I destroy it in, in you know, this experiment? Um, you know, something like this uh, Compact Portable 2 keyboard that's yellowed, uh, I would like to clean up and potentially retrobrite. But I don't want to use this as the experiment because these are much more rare and uh, much harder to come by. So with that being said, uh, let's get this keyboard outside. And let's start this experiment and see if we can retrobrite using only the power of the sun. All right, so here I am outside. I've got keyboard down. As you can see, it's a, a pretty sunny day here. We got a few clouds, but it's not too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and get this keyboard laid out into the sun. All right, so I got the keyboard set up here on just a little end table. I've just brought it outside. Um, I'm going to cover up. I think this half of it here with just a, a towel, that should keep the, uh, the sun off of it. So let's do that right about like that. That should be good. All right, now let's just let it sit and we'll check back uh, when the sun goes down and see if we've made any progress. All right, so this is about a day and a half later. The sun's just setting here. Um, we had another pretty sunny day few clouds, but I got a good amount of sun today. So let's go ahead and move this and see if we see any difference. And look at that. We do. Now I didn't clean this keyboard off first, so obviously any of the dirt is going to interfere with some of the, uh, the retro braiding, but I would say that's a pretty big difference for just a day and a half in the sun for an unclean keyboard. Very interesting. All right, so we can now see three stages of yellowing. Uh, a keyboard that's not super yellowed at all, uh, half of a keyboard that's been in a day and a half of sun, and very, very yellow keyboard. So now the, I think the big problem with this is that, you know, the backs of these keys are probably all about the same since it was facing the sun coming from this direction. At this angle, so I don't think the backs of the keys necessarily got much uh, UV radiation from the sun. Now we could spin it around and keep moving it, but I think you know areas that are always going to get the sun versus areas that are only going to get the sun when it's facing you know a certain direction is going to be a bit of a problem. Anyway, this is a, a pretty interesting uh, little experiment here. Uh, I think I'm going to throw this thing back outside, maybe, see if I can get it even more sun-bleached or, uh, you know, retro-braided. 
But uh, for now, I think that's pretty good. All right, well, we spent another uh, day outside here today, and I did actually wipe down this side first. Uh, not very well, there's still some dirt on it, but I got most of it off, so let's go ahead and see if we got much more of a difference here. Oh yeah, it's looking even better. Okay. All right, so we're back out in the sun again, and as you can see, the sides of the keys here, well, I mean, besides being a little dirty, uh, they're yellow because they haven't seen the sun at all. So I turned it this way. Let's see if we can get the sides of the keys to clean up at all. All right, so here is the final result. So I checked where I had put this out in the sun, and uh, it was getting about seven hours of sun a day, and this is with uh, sitting outside for three days of full sun and then one day of partly cloudy, maybe half sun. So uh, 25 hours out in the sun. And as you can see, like, it did a fairly good job. I'm really surprised by this. You know, looking at the uh, half that I had uh, under the towel there, it's disgusting, yellow, horrible. But this half here that was uh, exposed to the sun with no hydrogen peroxide, no anything, just in the sun, looks, you know, a ton better. And again, here's the, uh, what I would call the control. And I'm looking at that, you know, there's not that much difference. No, it's yellow too, of course, but, uh, so I wouldn't say this is factory apple color, but it's a ton better. And we talked about, you know, the sides of the keys. How did that turn out? Well, uh, I would say when I aimed it that way, you know, you can definitely see the yellowing here, um, lightened up a bit but there's still, you know, more to go. So I can keep throwing this thing out in the sun for the next week and, you know, seeing how much further we can take it. But I just really wanted to see if using the sun only was uh, a viable option for retrobriting, and it seems like it actually is. So there's one last thing we want to do here, uh, with this half of the keyboard anyway. Let me grab something, and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. So the last step we're going to do for this keyboard is to put some 303 aerospace protectant on it. So if you're just as confused as me, then yeah, we're on the same page. So we used UV to restore damage caused by UV, and now we're going to protect it from UV. Okay. In addition to protecting from UV, it does also restore some of the gloss, some of the shine to the, the keyboard as well. So let's go ahead and give this guy a little bit of 303 aerospace protectant and see how it kind of turns out and compare it to the original after that. All right, so they recommend uh, putting this on every three to five weeks. I think most people will find that, you know, just a single coat maybe once a year or something is good, um, but it is uh, something that's meant to be used over and over. So we're just gonna spray some here on paper towel and just kind of apply it to this half of the keyboard here. Well, let's try to get the tops of the keys and the sides of the ones I can easily reach. Again, this, uh, this keyboard, not uh, something that's really worth preserving. These are a dime a dozen. And, you know, I think it's a good uh, example to use for this project, but not something that, you know, I'm necessarily going to be hanging on to and, uh, you know, adding to the collection. I have dozens of these keyboards, so it's not like I need to pay special attention to this one. So let's get a good amount on here and we'll wipe the excess off. Now, of course, if you were doing this for a keyboard you did value, you would take all the keys off if you could and, you know, treat them one at a time individually instead of just kind of half-assing it like I'm doing here. But, uh, hey, half-ass is the name of the game on this particular keyboard. All right, so let's take a look at that and see what we have. So you can definitely see that the luster is back. Um, you know, between the, the keys here... The ones that are half treated, the ones that aren't treated at all. 
this keyboard looks, well, at least this half of it looks, I'm going to say 100% better. You know, it's certainly not back to its original factory condition, but it's looking really good. And just for comparison, again, here's the whole keyboard. So yeah, there you go. I think, uh, you know, there's lots of uh, opinions about RetroBrite, but let's wrap this video up and uh, move on to the next project. All right, well, there you go. So I guess you can RetroBrite without having to use peroxide or UV lights or you know, any of the other stuff that might scare some people away from trying to RetroBrite something they own. Now, if you go into other people's channels and look up the results of RetroBrite, it's a fairly contentious issue. Some people say you should do it. Some people say think about it. Some people say definitely never do it. So, you know, it's really a personal opinion whether or not you want to retrobrite your vintage equipment or not. Uh, how long do they last? How long will this last? Will this go back to its original color? Um, I think with the UV protectant on there, it shouldn't. But again, some people say that, you know, if you retrobrite, it's just going to get worse when it comes back. And there's a lot of opinions about that as well that I won't weigh into there either. Anyway, you know, the moral of the story is somebody on Facebook said they were retrobriting just by putting it in the sun. I thought, man, that's not possible. There's no way. And tested it out, and it's possible. So thanks for coming along on this experiment with me. Hope you learned something, and we will catch you in the next video. Hi, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch more of our videos later.